the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the trap, welcome, welcome to the trap. Let's go. Zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap, zen, trap. Protect your peace, protect your energy. Welcome back to the Zen Trap. I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. Zen P. The mission here is the Zen Trap is to inspire and empower listeners to continuously seek internal peace to maximize their personal potential. We got a ZTP for you today, a Zen Trap perspective. P, tell them what we got. So today we're reviewing a book, uh, All Around Goals, because goals is the topic for the month that we're following. It's Michael Hyatt's number one Wall Street Journal bestseller, New York Times bestseller, your best year ever a five-step plan for achieving your most important goals wow that was great new york uh, times bestseller so yogi yogi why don't you start us off who would you recommend this book to all right so personally i feel like i think there was a fact in the book that said this too i feel like this book is for people who have set new year's resolutions over and over again and who have failed um obviously anybody can want to set a goal and read this book and it'll help you. But ultimately, I think that niche group is those people who don't believe in those setting goals anymore, who don't believe that like, oh, I can put some on a piece of paper and find a way to hit that target in a time period, whether it be a year or 60 days or three months. So anybody that has kind of lost faith in goal setting, uh, I think this is perfect for them. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think if you're looking to revamp your goals or – find re-inspiration inside of goals this is a perfect book I don't know if I would necessarily start with this book as you know one of your first books on goals but I definitely would say like if you've been trying goals and you feel like they're not working for you this is a good book that can kind of re-engage you and to figure out maybe what's not been working uh the only reason I say I wouldn't start with it is just because I think the way it breaks goals down, it is best for somebody who's actually tried stuff first. Like you've tried some goals, yeah, you try tried some different things, sure. and maybe you're finding where it's not working. This book does a good job of, of talking about uh, the old motto, I guess, for goals and how you can even make small little shifts, tweaks that can help you stay committed and recommit and reevaluate the process of goals. Absolutely. I think that was – it was a great – uh, um, so yeah, how would you explain this book to somebody who hasn't read it? Uh, I guess I would explain it as like it's like a twelve-step program, but for goals. <laughs> okay. It's like it it steps you through, and a lot of what I found um, what stuck out to me is there are a lot of little like five five ways to do this, seven ways to do this, four four main points for this. So if you like those type of uh, points. Uh, or numbering type things like here are your five steps to how to get this done. Um, it'll work really well, but ultimately it is a sure proof way to say like, this is how you get a goal accomplished. Uh, and this, and they say your best year ever because most of the time people start their goals at the beginning of the year. Like I want to do this this year. Um, so how can you make it the best year ever? How can you hit every goal you set? It gives you everything clearly to find out on what you can do to make sure that you hit your goals. For sure. Yeah, agreed. Uh, again, piggybacking off of you, I think it's a great methodology on goals. It gives you steps, and I don't want to even call them broad. They're pretty detailed, mm -hmm. but every time at the end of it, it's always that caveat of you still got to find your own way. This is the plan, the blueprint of how to do it, but you need to find your own way inside of this blueprint. I love how many examples it gives. Oh, yeah, there's it's just, like, so many examples. So many examples in the back, templates and things that you can use, even with goals, how to break them down. I definitely learned a lot about goals, uh, and I think little things that you can tweak in goals and different, more so, like, terminology that you can use around goals to help you uh, stay consistent. And definitely breaking down more so of the stuff that we were talking about last time on the Zen Trap chat about tracking them and how to actually do those things. Very And detailed. it's stuff in there, some of the stuff you already know. You already know that, like, this is what I need to be doing. Uh, but it kind of gives you a, a dummy-proof way to make sure that you don't veer off of that in some of those, uh, some of the chapters or some of the, the things that are in there. So, all right, tell me what 
your favorite bar was what you what you feel like oh this was so good i'm gonna use this talk to me what you what'd you find all right well bar none bar, bar, bar none my favorite bar bar none mantra for the year bar none all right comfort is overrated Ooh. it doesn't lead to happiness yep. it often leads to self-absorption and discontent discomfort is a catalyst for growth it makes us yearn for something more it forces us to, sh to change stretch and adapt discomfort signals progress when you push yourself to grow you will experience discomfort but there's profit in the pain hey he talks about a lot of of getting out of your comfort zone uh when you talk about like making realistic ver goals versus risky goals how your goals should be risky and how you shouldn't be comfortable like if you're comfortable then now don't be delusional i like he calls it like the zone of delusion uh versus being uncomfortable but he definitely talks about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone in there so i thought that was really good yep what you got i got one for you um <laughs> History doesn't, rep they say history repeats itself, but they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it definitely rhymes. Definitely rhymes. It definitely rhymes, which was so good for me just because he basically saying like, all right, you might do not do the exact same thing over and over, but you're going to probably do something similar if you don't change your ways. If you don't do something different, drastically different, it's going to rhyme. The same thing is going to end up happening. I got another one for you um, that I thought was just, man, I was like, that's so true. Uh, we feel regret the strongest when the opportunity for the improvement is the greatest. So break that down for me. So basically, like you may feel regret in this moment of like, man, I shouldn't do that. But you should also look at that as a, a, a what's it? What is it called when it's like a, a opportunity? A, opportunity? Yeah, opportunity, but a, like a something ground, a feeding ground, a something ground. I don't know. I don't know the word for it. Nurturing. Uh, it's something like that. Uh, but that is the opportunity for you to to make the most change is when you experience that great deal of regret because you're feeling it right. You're in that moment of like, ah, oh, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. That was too that. But that is the biggest opportunity for you to take and, and improve and make the most change in that little space. To me. I mean, that was that was really good. Uh my other one of my other favorite kind of quotes areas uh deals around what I was talking about last time, which I think is the biggest improvement I need to personally make, which is measuring and tracking area. If it doesn't get on your calendar or task list, it's probably not going to happen. You're never going to find time in the leftover hours of the day to accomplish your goals. You have to make time for it. You have to make it a priority and keep it like an appointment, just like you would keep with anything else. Yeah. Pretty much it's a huge difference between saying, I'm going to try to make something happen and I'm going to make something happen. Uh, it, that section for me, again, was just almost about, again, having a plan. And it goes into more detail about that. We can talk about that in the sections, but... I, I love that the theme around this whole book still centers around everything else we've read and learned, which is like, you need to be in action. There's no yeah. such thing as really like trying, you either do it or you don't. And in doing it, you learn those lessons that you need to uh, to, to progress. That story about, um, it was like a military dude that Abraham Lincoln had said like, oh, you're going to lead the troops. And he had, he was known for all this extensive training and getting his people ready. And all oh, these soldiers are going to be trained up. And every time they went, like, it was time to go into battle, he was always, like, scared and never took action. He was all in this preparation phase. And they, in his mind, nobody else was ready. He was super conservative. Uh, we're not ready to battle those people. Even when he had numbers, when all the statistics said, like, you can do this, he failed to go into action. And so I, that was just a really good part. Some of the examples in there was good. I'll say one of the uh, stories that he told that was good for me was about, and that comes from my 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 favorite section, is when he was talking about gratitude. And he said uh, Coach K had all the Duke players take a basketball and write the names of everybody who had helped them get to that point on a basketball. And they were carrying the basketball around. Some people were sleeping with it. But every day they were looking at every single person in their life, from Pee Wee to, to whoever, your family, wherever. How, who helped you get there? And they won a national championship that year. And they were just talking about being grateful for those people. They sent each of those people a note, say, like, hey, thank you for getting us here. Like, you were a part of this. You helped me along the way. 
uh, it was just stories in there that like you may not know, you may know some of them, but just little tidbits about people in life and how they they conquered things or they they show gratitude to reach their goals or they show um, action to get to something or lack showing action. Um, so there's a lot of stories in there about different stuff. I thought that was good. Yeah, I loved all the stories. And the thing that I learned the most or that would stick with me, and I've heard this before, but again, it just resonates different when you hear something again from something else, is inside of starting, I think a lot of people get that analysis paralysis of not having everything figured out is that you don't have to figure everything out. You just need to know the next step. As long as you know the next step, you can put one foot in front of the other and keep progressing to the next goal uh, or the next process in achieving that goal. Um, it was, again, lots of little areas that I've learned from reading this, such as uh, instead of smart goals, smarter goals. I saw smarter you had that listed. Yeah, so um, what's smarter stand for? All right. A lot of the letters are still the same, but again, you got two extras in there and one and one that changed. Yeah, so specific, measurable, um, achievable, risky instead of... Risky instead of relevant. Relevant. Which is similar, but risky gives it a different term. Exactly. What's risky mean? To me, risky just means like making it a lofty goal, like something that's going to put you outside your comfort zone. Again, yep. not that it's delusional, not, not that it's something that you just cannot hit, but there's something that is going to make you like uncomfortable like you don't know how you're gonna do it necessarily you may not have like in your mind already oh if i wanted to do this i could if let's say we oh if i wanted to get a hundred views right yeah i could figure out how to get a hundred views on a video but i don't know how we get a thousand views that's a little bit more risky now it's not impossible you know what i'm saying i can't now if i put it at a million million views maybe that's a little impossible for where i'm at now but a thousand I just don't know how exactly I'm going to do it, but it's doable. I know it is. Yeah, and that, that piggybacks on that, what you were talking about, but those three zones of keeping your, your goals in. You got the comfort zone, the discomfort zone, and the delusional zone. Yeah. And, uh, I, thought he, I thought he broke it down well, but I still had a little bit of trouble trying to understand sometimes when you're flirting with that line between discomfort and delusional. It's hard to really tell someone they're being delusional about a goal because – you see, again, and online is only a small percentage of the world, but when you when you are online and stuff, and just people in general are capable and do such amazing things that they dreamed about and had this goal that looked really delusional at first, and they complete it, it makes you want to make delusional goals versus making those, skipping that whole layer of discomfort. Discomfort, yeah. yeah. You yeah. just want to go delusional. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see that, like, you, you want it to be in the discomfort zone, but you don't want to get to, like, the delusional zone. And I guess you can progress out of the uh, discomfort zone. Uh, did you get to the ER? Uh, exciting. Exciting, yeah. And uh, I the last R is... Oh, man, I forgot what the last R is. Relevant. Relevant. Yeah, I'm still relevant. Okay, cool. It's pretty much saying with relevant, your goals should align with your season of life, your values, and all your other goals. That's what. That's how you make your goals relevant. So, again, you got specific, measurable, actionable, risky, time-keyed, exciting, and relevant. Uh, I also liked how I know last time we talked about having goals in seven areas. This book had it in ten. Oh, yeah. Which they is, added again, um, more goals. Which I think one was like vocational, vocational, avocational, avocational, and, and added marital. marital and parental. So, of course, marital is your spouse or significant other, parentals, your children, if you have any, yeah. vocational is your profession, avocational is your hobbies and pastimes. So, yeah. still, so we had career and vocational, but yeah, we didn't have the hobbies and pastimes. You kind of band some of those together. So what I thought was cool about what he was talking about uh, when you set those like domains is what he was calling. These are your life has all these domains and that life is multifaceted. It's not all one domain. Um, All of them are interconnected. Every domain matters. Um, And progress is is started when you're clear about where you are in each of those domains. Um, Also, believing that you can improve any domain within your life as well as confidence, happiness, and life satisfaction are byproducts of personal growth in all of those domains, which I thought was a bar in itself. Uh, When you talk about, those are three things that stood out to me, confidence, happiness, and life satisfaction. I aspire to have every day uh, and want to continue to grow on that. So 
to know those are technically once you get to those places where you're confident, you're happy, you're satisfied with where you're at. Those are products of your personal growth. Those are byproducts of your personal growth. So yeah, and he talked about how, when you're starting to make the goals, you can use your life score, which is an assessment online, to figure out what areas you might want to make the goals in so you can see kind of where you're strong at and where you have Tra- opportunity for growth. Transparent moment, my life score was a 73. So I don't even know what that means. I didn't I didn't do my life score. <laughs> yeah, I went on there and did it. I should do my life score. For you should. Sure. What All right. Is, so what's the 73s? Like what? I don't even know how. So they grade it, of course, out of those 10 sections. And you could choose what sections you like don't want to apply. So like I didn't want marital to apply or parental to apply. I don't have kids. I'm not married. Uh, but I wanted all the other eight to apply. And then you basically go in there and rate yourself one through seven. They have examples of like what one is, what seven is, and where you feel like you are in that. And then they give you a score. That's it. Okay. So you're a 73 out of what? 100. Oh, that's good, right? Like, yeah, so many people. I, I'm not saying it's bad. Okay. I don't think they put good or bad or whatever on there. They just gave you a score. I guess what does the total even tell you, though? Like, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's what what does the total score tell you versus, like, you well, can get saying, low in something. And high, li- like, yeah, if, it's saying your If you went around score. and heard somebody got, like, a 50, You'd be like, oh, you low in something. Yeah, you low in, or you may be like very low even in, in multiple areas. Yeah, you could be low in a lot. Like, yeah, okay. So I think it's just a life score. It's saying out of all these things that encompass mostly your life, this is probably where you're at overall. Yeah, I'm just saying without the specifics of it, you're not going to know. Like if somebody came around and said they was a 25 versus a 60 versus a whatever, yeah, you, you ain't going to be able to you know, know the what they without nah. actually looking into they, it. You're not trying to – I don't think it's for everybody else to know. No, no, no I don't yeah. think so either, but that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, if you yeah. just holler out a 73, it's just going to be like, okay, you all right. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your favorite section or, or group? Uh, my favorite section, I think one of the biggest things I learned – was the difference between achievement goals and habit goals. Oh, yeah, that was good. That was very that was good. big for me. And I thought I had it, like, uh, broken out. But what was your favorite section? Well, I can, I I can break that, that down for you while you – I mean – I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. Uh, I can uh, break it down off the – off of memory. Off the but. Um, but honestly, the gratitude section, when he was just talking about being grateful, um, that's just something that I'm sitting with that resonates with me. Um, constantly being grateful for where you are, uh, showing, and he had examples where, in many cases, people being grateful align with them achieving their goals and hitting the mark, and so things like that, they just resonate. Was with that right grateful now. section about like completing the past? Was that um, tied together? So it was right after the regret section. Okay, so is regrets completing the past? You, completing the past. So it's making acknowledgement with your past. Yes. Yes, that was yes. It was right after that. Okay. Um, which I I thought the regret section was pretty good. That was a close section for second for me, just because, um, just sit. Sometimes regret seems like such a negative word, um, but the way he kind of just explained it and like how you can have so much potential to grow from it, it really uh sat with me well. So I, I like that section too. But go ahead. Man. All right, distinctions with the difference. Achievement goals are focused on one-time accomplishments. And I think a lot of people confuse goals in general. Like I don't think they break them down between achievement and habit sometimes. Yeah. Achievement goals, uh, again, one-time accomplishments in, in, include deadlines. Give me an example. Uh, paying off your credit cards, hitting a financial benchmark, finish writing a novel or a book, completing, like, completing something. Got it. Habit goals, on the other hand, involve regular ongoing activities such as daily meditation practice, a monthly coffee date with a friend, walking each day after lunch. There is no deadline because you're not trying to accomplish just one thing. You're trying to maintain a practice. Instead, there's a start date which triggers initiation. So, for example, uh, run my first half marathon by June 1st. That's an achievement goal. You ran your first marathon. A habit goal that could help you achieve that goal is run three miles on weekdays at seven o'clock starting January 15th at this track. And that's a smarter goal because it's measurable, it's specific, it's where, specific all of that. where all the details is in it. Again, Time example, bound. increase sales revenue 20% by the close of the third quarter. I'm going to call four new client prospects each week beginning March 1st. 
I want to read 50 books by December 31st. I need to read 45 minutes each evening at 8 p.m. beginning immediately. Yeah. I got an achievement goal. I want to read 12 books this year. I don't have a habit goal yet. So maybe getting a habit goal to where, oh, read a book every month. That's a habit goal that will help me get to my achievement goal. Another big thing for me when we were talking about uh, how you kind of stay with habit goals and stuff like that is – uh, trigger frequencies and this again from the atomic habit books is talking about cues and things like that i really am big on triggers i think you you had a good one where you talked about not i don't think you said it on video but you said it to like jalan about when you decide to pray yeah yeah when i when i go to do my morning routine go to the bathroom in the morning i pray immediately somebody at work calls it a bio break and i want to i want to start saying that so that they be like about to get out the cube or meeting and be like, oh, excuse me, y'all, I got to take a bio break. I was like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I, I do want to hit on this, though. Um, and I guess it's part of my, my takeaway, but um, I think he it's a five-step program, and I just kind of want to list out the five steps for you so you don't feel like we can tell you the five steps. Ultimately, it's upgrade your beliefs and what's possible. That's one. Two is the power of back backwards thinking, um, harnessing regret. Three, smarter achievements and habit goals to make sure you reach your goals. Four is intrinsic motivation. He talks about what motivates you, working in groups, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then five is making it happen by taking action. So just in case you want to know exactly what his five steps are, those were the five step uh, steps in the book. Yep, and last thing for me, again, is about uh, triggers. I just want to give yeah. you some example of triggers and these, like, if-then statements that can really, like, power and supercharge your goals. So, uh, activation triggers. Let's see. You want to kind of, like, eliminate temptations that could derail you. Uh, automate if you can and delegate where you can. For example, for show sure delegate. I uh, I don't want to read all of this. I'd rather give you like real examples. I'll just give you real examples because yeah. those are real specific to him. If you're trying to work out, of course, no brainer. Having your clothes set out already helps you get into the mind of working out. Having the clothes in your car or something, or stopping on your way home. From work, you can't go home until you work out. So you got to go to the gym before you go home. So setting up, and you, the good thing about this book is he keeps talking about you have to experiment until you figure out the triggers that work for you. So it's not like you're going to brainstorm some triggers, you can figure them out. You could try them, and they, they might not be the ones that motivate you. Or you might need to uh, reinvent them every now and then. They might get a little stale. So, again, like Lindsay's saying, she tied hers to something she does every day. Every morning, I'm going to have a routine. I'm going to go to the bathroom. It's going to make me think, like, oh, you're supposed to be praying right now. So, tying it to something that you do every day really helps a lot, too. So, th those are really big for me about, like, that activation triggers. And another one that he, he didn't really talk about or hit on as much, and I got this one from Atomic Habits, but I like to talk about, like, priming your environment. So, saying where you're going to do the goal letting activity is good. But also making sure that environment is ready for you to do it. Yeah, it's, everything's it's like, there. Everything's there that you need. It's not. It's it's like making it attractive again. Making mm -hmm. the goal you want to do attractive so that you want to do it. And I think he said like in the smarter goals, you want to make those those things exciting. Make it exciting. Yeah, you want to make it exciting. Like, oh, I'm I'm excited to go do this. I know this is something that I do. And even like he he pulled out something. One of his triggers was like closing his laptop at a certain time, uh, but it didn't work. And he ended up opening his laptop after a couple of weeks and keep continuing to work. So then he started leaving his laptop at, at work. Those are the type of things like you can tweak those conditions, those triggers. You can you can always improve on what you think will work. And he even says that about goals. Like and sometimes you have to remove a goal. Like you, yep. he uh, recommends doing quarterly evaluations. He has a weekly, daily, a weekly, daily, quarterly. weekly, quarterly. Um, daily so is real short. Yep. Weekly so, is a little bit more intensive, maybe ten minutes still, and then quarterly you kind of doing a deep dive on on your goals, on your Looking goals to them. figure out what's working, what's not. Do I need and to I like the some, distinction between strategy and a goal. Yep. Your strategy can change at any point. If you aren't seeing results, you yep. can change your strategy at any point. 
your gold can too, but you kind of want to leave your gold there for a little bit. And like last resort, you want to remove it or replace it. But your strategy for how you're trying to attack the gold, you don't have to be married to it. You can divorce that hoe at any time. Anytime. I mean, some stuff just don't work. Like uh, I thought in theory, I thought I could do that, but I'm not disciplined enough yet. Or uh, that just not feasible for my lifestyle. So you can always change your strategy, but ultimately you make your goals be a certain way because that's kind of what you want, right? And you don't necessarily need to change those unless you're on your last resort. Things that life happen, you know? Right. So last thing that uh, you made me think about while you were saying that, again, I'm all about where I'm at in my phase of goals is in the measure and tracking progress of making it fun. And the way he described it in the book was called gamify your measure sometimes. I'm a, I love games. I've been told many times on many occasions I play too much. Gamifying how you measure it. He talked about his, his water intake. He found an app. I forget what it was called, but pretty yeah, much it was an app where it. you water a tree. So every time you drink some water, you you log it in the app and it makes the tree kind of like grow a little bit and the tree gets happier. And it makes you want to keep drinking water because you want to keep your tree alive. And then if you're not drinking water, if you're not logging, the tree starts to die, the plant or whatever. Yeah, a yeah, plant, plant dies. Die. So it's just a little crazy stupid app to, to most other people but then you start getting invested he also talked about street trackers that's real big for me i'm a big street person so if i make a little check mark or a little something on the calendar if i start seeing gaps that really messes with me it, it makes me feel like oh man i'm not on it so i'm a big street tracker kind of guy i used to play wordle a lot wordle yeah the street tracker on there would yeah. just keep me going keep back there, like keep me going back like ooh, 15 in a row baby <laughs> 15 correct in a row so yeah. again knowing what works for you everybody's not competitive everybody not. don't like games everybody don't get motivated by stuff like that fuck that street <laughs> find something that you really enjoy that that what what motivates you what motivate like what what is a measure that motivates you incentives <laughs> boy i want to call you a nigga so bad <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> incentives like what because we talk about intrinsic incentives and external incentives i'm sure you're probably talking external right it's, yeah of course external motivates me but what's there's some, some intrinsic, inter some in intrinsic let me be very specific what's some intrinsic incentives that can help you with measuring and tracking and gamifying your goals or making it fun for you specifically so um i i don't I honestly don't even want to say this out loud, but uh, I can be it's very intrusive. like, yeah, I know, but I'm very like confident, I would say, in a lot of ways. So um, something that motivates me is like when I learn something. So like reading, the reason why I can have a goal this year, last year my goal was 10 books, this year is 12, is because I feel like I got so much more knowledge and I, I know more shit now. So I'm just excited to know shit about subjects that I might not have no, known. What? It's nothing so wrong with a, that. I don't understand no, 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 the I, hesitancy. I, I just want to be like, it's it's kind of weird just because I want to be like smart. Like, I just want to know more. It's not. I, like, I want to know more. What's stuff. wrong? That's nothing wrong with that. That's not, maybe not. I don't. That's what I'm, I don't understand. The yes, it's good. It's good <laughs> to feel good about knowing information. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it? What? Right, what? That, look, even that. That's weird. What do you mean? Is it? What do you mean? I mean. Maybe I feel too good about it is what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like, oh, I'm learning so much more. I'm about to be so much smarter than I was before. Like, that's so great. Even what you're saying is not even come across, like, pompous or, like, you, say, you, you left it to yourself. Not, like, I think what you're worried about is you, you saying, oh, I'm smarter than you because I read this book. And not once did you leave it, take it from yourself. No. You're saying I'm being smarter than I was before. Like, yeah, because I mean, wrong I'm just learning all. stuff and I like to know a lot of stuff. Yeah, so. say that. you so confident. Say that confidently. <laughs> I like to know a lot of stuff about, about many subjects. I think that's a great, that is a great example of an intrinsic win. Mm -hmm. I read this, I learned something new. That's that's the, that's the yeah. a small intrinsic, that was a perfect win, example. Sure. I just don't want you to like hesitate. Like, what? You're right, you're right, you're right. All right, anything else from the people? This is, honestly, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. You know half the stuff in here. Now, you're going to learn some stuff, but you already know half the stuff in here. Uh, either we done told you or you kind of just know it through living life. But how to apply it, he got examples in there. He got stories in there. 
definitely go check it out. Love the examples. Love the connecting pieces. Uh, again, the back of the book is full of people's goals and examples that they use. Um, again, love the methodology. Uh, you got a story in your life relates or anything happening in your life that relates right now with goals or, or this? I mean, ultimately, the smarter. Uh, exciting was, I've always wondered, like, smart smart goals are good, right? Yeah, it sounds good in theory. Um, but I, I remember, like, goal setting last year, and I was like, man, some of this just don't sound fun. So when he said about, like, your goals being exciting, that really, like, resonated with me. Um, so I felt like I almost wanted to go back to my goals. I've already wrote them down, but go back to my goals and make sure that they are exciting. I'm things definitely to me. going back to my yeah, goals. They, after they're exciting years. to me. Um, I, I know they're they're the smart. They they got most of the smart stuff down. I probably can look at the risk level on some of them, uh, the discomfort on some of them. But ultimately, that exciting really spoke to me and where I am with my goals right now. And I want to make sure my goals are exciting. Uh, yeah, I. I a thousand percent agree. For me, I want to look back into some of the goals that I have to make sure that they're achievement or habit goals. Firstly and for, foremost, I think that was one of the biggest parts for me is that simple shift in mindset on knowing yes. if a goal is a habit goal or achievement goal. Just defining it, put it verbiage. Defining to it. and putting verbiage yeah. to it just does so much for me because. As you can see with the examples we gave, those habit goals can help you achieve some of those achievement goals. And that's what can make it exciting. Like you said. And that's, uh, that's part of the growth mindset of just enjoying the process. Right. And But what I'm saying is that how it can make it exciting is not just saying like, oh, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to lose. Okay. That's an achievement goal. I want to lose 10 pounds. A habit goal is I I want, or it could be another achievement goal. Either one. Something that can make it exciting is. I want to hike every trail in the DFW before December 31st. I want to hike 10 trails in the DFW. Mm -hmm. I want to hike 10 trails. Or and do I want to hike a trail once a month. Habit goals. Habit goals that make you now excited. It's like, oh, I really wanted to get out more yeah. in nature anyway. That stuff. So every first Saturday of the month, I'm going to go do a trail. I'm going to put it on my calendar. I'm not going to let people I'm gonna block that time up. It just makes it more engaging, more specific. And once the plan is more specific, you can start moving all the other stuff out of the way. Yep. So I really like uh, the key. And again, I've been hearing a lot of Kobe quotes and all that other stuff of RIP. how you can be more creative when you have those barriers of, of, of focus. So once you make your lines, which is pretty much your morals, values, your discipline, your plan, your strategy and stuff, now you can be creative inside of it. These are my rules during this time frame. I'm not going to be doing all of this other stuff, so I'm just focused on this. Now I can be creative. I know the rules of the game. Now gotcha. I can play it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I don't necessarily have a story either. I'm just going to definitely revisit those goals. Uh, I'm excited about my goals again. I'm recommitted. <laughs> That's good. Because, it's again, it's one goal that I got that's ready by June that I'm really excited about trying to attempt. So... What's that go? Oh, it's the, again, dunking off two hands. Dunking off vert with two hands. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Dunking off vert with two hands. That Definitely. boy going to be yamming on y'all in the gym. I ain't even got to do all that. I don't even really want to. <laughs> I mean, if you could dunk off vert with two hands, you could yam too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so that's I'm, a, just... I'm an injury prone type of guy, especially at this age. I don't even really drive to the rack like that. I'm really? going to be honest. For, for what? For what? Wow. what? What Kobe say? I ain't taking no charge. For what? <laughs> For what? That just increased my chances of getting hurt. I got Steph Curry ankles. Mm -mm. I'm going to stay out here. I'll drive and I'm going to kick that hole. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> no, I'm cool. Look I'm cool. I'll do a post move. I'll post up. That's what I'm, okay, so I'm you, not you, driving you, to the rack. Yeah, you ain't taking it from the no. top of three and I'm not Two no. Power I'm not. I'm not coming in there so somebody can push me out the air or trying to yam oh, on somebody. Yeah, I'm not doing yeah. all of that. Yeah. No, I have no desire whatsoever. Now you catch me on a fast break or something, and I'm feeling a little risky. Every blue moon or something. Bouncy. Something. I'm feeling a little bouncy today. Yeah, you might catch a little Ooh. something, but <laughs> just coming down in, in what is it? Congestion and traffic. Yeah. No, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm past those days. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Euro pass. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm not doing it. All right, man. Hey, we want you to check out uh, Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. This has been another ZTP Zen Trap Perspective. I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. Zen P. If you can't do nothing else, protect your peace. Protect your energy. It's, it's the, the Zen, Zen Trap. trap. We, we out. out.
into the trap.